I worked there up until 2010. The company was going to set up a branch in Kwara State, a learning precisely, and they needed a few people that we want to move to a learning. So I volunteered and I was um, appointed as part of the team. So we went to a learning, started a learning branch, and things were really doing well. Um, even though most of those times I had to even come to Lagos to close deals because I've been a Lagos boy all my life. So it was really difficult closing deals in the learning at the early stage. So I'll travel down, close deals. I wanted my branch to be one of the best branches. So I won't drop the transactions in Lagos. I'll take it to a learning to go and add to one. Gradually, we started doing well, became um, a branch to be envied, um, got a good place for the company, such that even those that worked in the bank then, you know, 2006, 2007, 2008, the banking industry was really booming. It was a theme of, a theme of pride to say I work with a bank because most people then were earning well. It's, the story has changed now, it's no longer like that. So when they even come to our office, then they'll be like, man, these guys, you are even living better, you have a, the office is cozy, everything compared to, that's to tell you how much we built the branch then. But because the company I was working with was focused on capital market products, and we all knew the Holocaust that came on the capital market in Nigeria 2008, 2009. Initially, it wasn't affecting the company, but eventually, okay, I think I need to mention the name of the company, that's Ames Asset Management Limited. Yeah, Ames Asset Management Limited. Um, a company that started with almost nothing, but at start this 2008, I, I was talking. About, I'm talking about now. You have um, the company's turnover monthly basis was no longer in millions. There is no month we're in turning over at least uh, maybe two billion, three billion. 2007, and the company that started with almost nothing. So 2009, the capital market came crashing. I'll talk about a great lesson I learned from that company now that. I'm making use of today. The company was doing so well, but never diversified. We taught diversification. We go out to people to preach investment, teaching them diversification. But you know, we were diversifying within the same sector. That was how I told my um, superior in the office, I want to relocate back to Lagos. I said, why not? Things are not working here. If that's how the one painful incident actually made me relocate. I wanted to take a master's program at the University of Illinois then. I applied and it was competitive because even as far back as then, University of Illinois was doing well because they don't go on strike, everybody just wants to go there. So I got admission on merit and I couldn't pay the fees because things are gone bad. The company happens to be a company that really supports people, but I discovered academic-wise they weren't investing in people. I never requested for anything from the company, but that when I couldn't pay out to write that CCC for something thousand men, I didn't get a response. I traveled out to Lagos to meet with my um, agency manager then, spoke to him, no response. Before I knew it, the school fees from for something thousand, by the time they released the second list, their own school fees was 80 something. By the time the third batch came out, their school fees uh, was uh, maybe about one, I just gave up that man. I couldn't pay for something thousand, now it's over 100,000. It was so painful because I felt, okay, if work is not going, let me add value to myself education-wise. But thank God it happened that way because if I'd gotten that degree then, I wouldn't have left it learning. I'll be a local champion. I know I'll get another job there. And today I have two master's program. I'm pursuing the third one. So, but it was painful then that I couldn't, um, I couldn't. So I just felt, so what? Yes. Am I doing here? Let me just come back to Lagos. I told my wife, she agreed. And that was how uh, we located back to Lagos. Even then I got to Lagos, I saw opportunities. I, I told myself, I can't continue with this job. And so I didn't even stay up to six months. After I got back to Lagos, before I said, okay, okay I was going to resign and start business. And my parents were not rich, um, really below average. That's a fact because you know, to see the kind of house we lived in uh, when I was growing up. So it's not average, it's below average, but I've never had to disturb them for anything. So while on campus, I was always looking for means to ensure that I sustain myself. And I started doing business on campus. The real estate I'm doing today, each time I look back, I just laugh because when I was on campus, 
uh, other students will need accommodation. I will go talk to landlords around that. Do you have room in your house that you want to rent? When they say they have, I'll now go and tell students that, ah, if you want to rent too. So I'll show them. And when they pay, the landlord will call me and say, take your own commission. So I've been doing that as an undergraduate. I did that. Later, I saw some shoes somewhere. I felt it was good. See, I've started failing in business for long, not today. So people look at the success or the progress story, but there's also the failure stories. You saw shoes? Yeah. Uh, somebody brought some shoes there and said, ah, this. So to me, I felt they were good shoes. You know, perception. <laughs> I never knew people would not like them. The little money I had then, I went to buy like 20 shoes. Only for me to start marketing, nobody bought. Only one person was saying enough to call me and say, you see this shit? <laughs> nobody would buy. Ah! And to me, I felt I had good shoes to sell, you know. I struggled. I remember giving out those shoes to people that don't even need them. I'm sure they're going to trade. You know, interesting. So I've been doing business as an undergraduate. And I've always uh, been interested in selling things. So immediately I resigned from Ames. Uh, why it was easy is because I did not start business alone. We were three that started together. We have a friend, um, Oladipupo Clement, is the CEO of LifePage Group. Um, he invited myself and Wisdom Ezekiel that he is starting a business. He wouldn't mind, he wants us to be a part of the team. So we said, why not? We've been together. He was our superior in Ames then. We told ourselves that most of these things people need at home, if you can bring it to their doorstep, they'll be happy. Your wives, yourself, you don't want to go to the market every time to get pepper, to get meat, to get this. If someone can get it and supply at your doorstep, um, even at a cheaper price than you would have gotten it, you will like it. So from that concept, we told ourselves, we, we called the business then Edibus. And we will travel to places in Oyo State. And there's a place they call uh, Maya. Uh, okay, this okay area. Uh, uh, what do they call? Uh, those, some far places to go and buy these things. But the way we did it then, we'll go to families and say, "See, what are the things you buy every month, food stuff wise? If we can bring it to your doorstep at cheaper than the amount. Maybe a tuba of yam used to buy for 200. We can supply at 150." All we need to do is believe in us, give us money, let's go do the shopping. You know, we didn't have money to buy, so people will give us money, like 10, 20 people will travel, will buy these things. And but interestingly, we always buy more than what is needed, so we we'll sell those to an open market. So these were things I did after I left Ames. Imagine I've been putting on suit for like four years, driving around, marketing people, and all of a sudden, because of the entrepreneurial ingenuity and the understanding I have that you can be out of job, never be out of work. So even if you don't have a job, make sure you are working. So with that, we sold all of those things. I'm just trying to let you know that those entrepreneurial ingenuity has always been there. But for the business we started, it was after we started this business we did all of these things because if you are pursuing purpose, if it's not working yet, there are talents around the purpose. As many as they are, keep exploring them. The three of us worked in Ames together. And like I said, Oladipo Clement was our direct line manager. Both of us were managers under him. We both became managers later, but in our line, Oladipo Clement happened to be our own manager. So he talked us into starting the life page. We started life page and we were together up until 2012 when we mutually, or we all came together and agreed because we already started another business then, myself and um, Wisdom Ezekiel. Um, when life is started, like I said, Olad Proclement is like the major shareholder in the business. He conceived the idea and brought both of us. So more like he's the main owner, even though we worked together as equal. We were together in life for like four or five years because we had first start life page like two, a year or two before we left Ames. But not really doing any business per se, but we have always pictured together that we're going to do some things post Ames. Okay. Exactly. So we're together and um, we, myself and Wisdom, started the transport business then outside of, uh, it was still in Ames then. So when it, after I've resigned, we started transport business and uh, 
was driving and when he got out of Ames, we were still together for maybe like one year. But at the point, he just advised us that, guys, this your transport business is really keeping you busy. And I know there is no way you can give 100% commitment to LifePage any longer. Wouldn't it be better for you to face this? And why not? As friends, we came together and agreed and relinquished our positions as executive directors and remained shareholders in LifePage. That's how we were able to focus on um, What's it called? Pertinent. Um, the transport business, uh, we started it by first identifying, we asked ourselves, what are the businesses that, what are the things you can do as far as Nigeria is concerned that you can't go wrong with if you put your structures right? Of course, selling food is one. That was why we did edibles. Transportation is another major thing. So we asked, what are the gaps? in the transport industry. How can we fill these gaps? And we discovered that many people want to do transport, but they are afraid of um, losing their money to all of these street guys and like that. Most of the drivers are not trained. Um, the last mile issue then was very thick. I mean, so we told ourselves, we tried solving all of this problem. We itemized all the risk involved in transport business and we brought out mitigants to those risks. So we started marketing that, that document to people that we can help you manage transport business. And we did it for a few years, but of course, it was very stressful because it's the normal yellow buses on the road and you know to work with those guys. But I'm grateful to God that we did not disappoint any of the people that invested. Rather than disappoint them, we went through a lot of stress lost time, energy, money. We didn't make money, but we ensured that they made their money. So it was really a tough one. But thank God for those days. You see how that it later paid off. Because these same people have turned out to give us businesses that produce far, because they saw that we were committed to ensuring that they don't lose their money. So the investors' funds were protected until we returned everything to them and said we're no longer doing this thing is becoming stressful and that was when we started real estate and we saw this is a better <laughs> business to sit down with.